You're at the flea market. There's a lot of reels on a table. You pick one up. It's doing that, making that herky jerky noise. Oh, we got to pick that down. That's no good. Well, no, you're passing up one of the very early Zebcos, a chrome model made before 1957. One of the very best with the brass gears, smooth as silk. And the only problem is that the cover isn't on right. All you have to do is unlock the cover, put it on there straight, line up the holes. Smooth as silk. We're teaching you how to get a lifetime reel today for $5 or less. How to identify them, what they are, and we're going to start with Zebco. Well, what is a lifetime reel? Well, a lifetime reel generates from a concept and a lifestyle perpetuated by the World War I generation of machinists and those that came before them. And that is, if you bought a piece of equipment that they had machined, it was designed to last not only your lifetime, but that of your children and your grandchildren. And when you were lubricating, for example, a bearing, you were lubricating some form of corundum. Hardness of nine, that's either industrial ruby, a ruby you can't see through, perhaps even a real ruby. Zebco will repair or replace the product and return to purchaser without additional charge. That is your warranty. People knew when they saw a warranty that their piece of equipment, in our case a reel, had been put together to manufacturing specifications unheard of today. Everything was hand checked with feeler gauges, micrometers to make sure all the specifications were met inside and outside. And at the end of it all, your reel, whatever you've got in your hand, was operated by one of these people to make sure that it was smooth and did exactly what it was supposed to do not only for the person's lifetime who bought it but for a couple more generations. This is an original machinist toolbox. You can buy a clone of this now at Harbor Freight I understand but this is an original Courtesy of one of our longtime viewers, Larry Drown. This was his father's toolbox. Now, my own grandfather was born in 1900, and he was World War I generation. His working life was until 1970. So, generally, a lifetime reel is manufactured any time before 1970. That's what we're talking about. After 1949, we start to have the spin casters coming in and virtually everyone went to them because a Zebco would cast, as you know, over 4,000 rounds without a backlash of any kind. And then some went much longer than that. Or you, you had the Johnson type spin caster. Now this is a, uh, a Hedden's version, but arguably the better reel because you can spin cast with it, flip it over, and now you got a casting version of it. The early reel covers and the later reel covers. Note the smaller hole on the early ones. These are highly accurate to cast with. And that can be your first check when you're looking at one. You just look and you see that small hole, you buy the thing. Now you'll notice I've got a new cover on the front stainless cover and a new cover on the back on an old reel. Now I'm at the flea market. How do I how do I get in there quickly to check 
what's going on anyway. You've got a lock screw right here. You just unloosen that. You've got two detents. One right here. And you've got an appropriate tit right here. And you're just going to take boom off and now you're checking the guts see what you got okay so you check that and it can look horrible and uh, you might you might say well I'm gonna bypass that well no don't bypass that because it's got lube in it and a lot of them when you look in them they haven't been lubricated since the original owner died 30 years ago so uh, this one is pretty good it's got steel gears Okay, so it was after 1968, probably 68 to 72, somewhere in there, because we still have the real simple anti-lock mechanism. Okay, and you'll notice that when I'm showing you these things, I'm using this cover and maybe this chrome cover from 1956. Uh, as, far, as far as the covers on front and back, they're interchangeable. So don't worry about that stuff. Just make sure you have good guts. This is my grandfather's 1956 model, chrome. There's no anti-reverse on it, no anti-reverse lever. This is anti-reverse on a 1957 to 70s model. As you can see in here, it's simply a little butterfly piece of metal that clicks down on that, locks in that gear, so you cannot, fish cannot, unwind the reel on you. That's all that is. Very simple to take care of. If anything is wrong with that, all you got to do is take your needle nose and bend this in the appropriate direction, and it's working again. So if you pick one up and your anti-reverse is not locking in, you've got a aluminum body you've got a metal body you know that that is an easy fix for you and you've got a lifetime reel brass gears brass gears went out about 1968 they are the smoothest of all Zebcos and to check check them all you got to do is hold this with your fingers and lightly see if you can turn the handle. Now I'm not putting hardly any pressure on that. I don't have to because I don't want to strip it. If they're stripped, they will the handle will readily turn. Okay, how did it get that way? Well, you know, hey, I'm hung up in the bushes, Marvin. Well, just lock your lock your drag down and reel the boat over. And well, they would reel the boat over and strip out these gears. There's a fix for that. Not hard. Here's your brass gears, and I've added a piece of wire in here to tighten these up. That's a rig, I will admit. And then on the other film, how to overhaul your Zebco 33, you saw me take a triangular file and bring these gears back. Easy to do, nothing hard about it. That's all there is to one of these reels. I hear about feather touch. What is that? Well, from about 1957 up to 68 in there somewhere, they had feather touch, which is a tremendous asset to you because it's just a little added bar that goes in here. This operates like a clutch on a car. And all we're doing with feather touch when we we can hit the button lightly, it gives us a little extra couple of springs that this swash plate back here lines up. This is old. I'm going to replace this O-ring right here. Let me get some of the dirt off. See, that? that's just a piece of rubber that we can go down to Harbor Freight, get an O-ring kit, and we're good for another 50 years. But it, it just simply lines this swash plate up a little more accurately than the earlier versions. That was the idea so that you can feather your lure and you can literally land your lure on a specific 
pad of a lily pad. Yeah, an individual leaf, and you can uh, drop your worm in there to where so soft that it doesn't create any ripples. And when all you do when you pull your uh, pull your worm off the lily pad leaf, the bass sees it, didn't even know that it, it was there to begin with, and boom, you got it. And dollars to donuts, and the generation we're talking about, it has it. Okay. If we just look for some of these specific things, that it's got brass gears, we're pretty much good to go, no matter what. And even if it doesn't have it, let me tell you, they are really, really soft touch. And uh, you can do a little bit of practice, you can do that anyway. Brass, brass, that's what we're looking for in a pre-1970s real should look like this so in short with a zebco what am i looking for to get the very best one i can for my five dollars at the flea market no plastic you don't want to see any plastic brass gears steel gears are okay but we'd rather have brass and if it does not have your anti-reverse it's a 1956 or before. If it has that little extra plunger, you've got feather touch. All right. If you need anything else, there's a detailed overhaul how to restore your Zebco 33 that I've done. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll take you through the complete reel. And now we're going to go through the Johnson and the Shakespeare and the Heddens. In other films and let you let you get in some of these quality reels and see what they're like I think you'll enjoy them and catch a lot of fish with them good luck with your fishing